Welcome to As the World Burns. I'm your host, Brandon. Some experts say sports won't return until the fall of 2021, Perna. If that happens, I will probably just fall back on my second career as professional borrower of money from my mommy and daddy. I'm sure you've seen the headlines about sporting events and concerts not returning until the fall of 2021. What I will say is don't bet on anything. We have no timeline and we have no realistic dates to which anything will resume to a state of normalcy. So hold on to hope is, is my point there. Have hope. We do have some tangible NFL news to discuss today. Christian McCaffrey got rich. Well, richer than a top 10 draft pick who grew up with a dad who was a multi-millionaire. The XFL has filed for bankruptcy, and I will tell you which teams may be the most active in the NFL draft. And a lot like high school, it's the mildly attractive teams with the lowest amounts of self-esteem. Let's get it sports. Please subscribe to this YouTube channel. I do near daily NFL news updates. Uh, today's episode though is sponsored by Audible, which is great timing considering all of us have a lot more time to kill. The Time to Kill, one of my favorite John Grisham novels, you can listen to on Audible. I just listened to the Audible original, The Deep Deep Snow, which was recommended by one of you. So please, if you have more recommendations for audiobooks, I would love to hear about them in the comments. I am currently listening to Bob Iger's book, so I know how to run the NFL one day. This seems like a great time for me to learn about leadership. And I also just learned if you don't love a book you have downloaded, you can swap it for a different title. With your Audible membership, you get a credit every month to download a new Audible title and a selection of two Audible originals to download. Visit audible.com slash that's good sports or text that's good sports to 500 500. Again, that's audible.com slash that's good sports to help you pass the time with thousands of titles to choose from. Let's start today off with some positivity. Here's the best news you will read all week. Olive Veronesi, a 93-year-old woman in Pennsylvania, needed more beer. Olive posted a delightful picture with a sign that read, I need more beer, with the Coors Light can in hand from her home window. Now, we all need more beer right now, but Coors did the smart thing and sent Olive who I'm very surprised isn't a martini drinker, 150 cans of Coors Light. To which Olive happily replied on Twitter, that should last the weekend. Thanks, Coors. And when you make it to your 93 of life, you gotta stick with what works. Olive posted a wonderful picture of herself sipping that sweet, sweet Colorado, Canadian, Milwaukee, or wherever Molson Coors beer is technically brewed now, with a new whiteboard sign that read, got more beer. I love this story so much that I tried something similar, but with no success, none. I couldn't even get one more bottle of my Henry IV Dudognan Heritage Cognac Grande Champagne. If Coors can spare 150 of their beers, Dudognan can give me two or three bottles of the $2 million Cognac, which has been aged 100 years, seven years longer than the Olive herself. So just pay attention at this time to the companies doing the right thing. Coors, you done right. A Christian McCaffrey can afford to buy as many bottles of the most expensive cognac in the world as he wants. Run, CMC, became the highest paid running back in NFL history after inking a four-year, $64 million deal with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I'm kidding, I'm kidding, but I bet that just scared the piss out of Panthers fans. The deal is a four-year extension and the Panthers said we wanted Christian to have enough money to continue to pay for all of the sunscreen he requires to play outside on Sundays. Now McCaffrey had 19 touchdowns last season plus 2,392 all-purpose yards during a season where the Panthers started three different quarterbacks. 
And I'm not sure any of us really realized how great McCaffrey has been. Check these stats out from at Paul Hembo. In his first three seasons, McCaffrey has outperformed Marcus Allen in rushing yards, Marvin Harrison in receiving yards, DeAndre Hopkins in receptions, to which Bill O'Brien said, big fucking deal, and Barry Sanders in yards from scrimmage. I think they call that a complete back. Now McCaffrey earned his payday with an insane 2019 performance. He was just the third player in NFL history with over a thousand rushing yards and a thousand receiving yards. And the 2,392 yards I mentioned, also third most in NFL history. Christian McCaffrey joined Roger Craig and Marshall Falk as the double thousand backs who accomplished their records in 1985 and 1999. The question remains, did the Panthers overpay for a running back? My answer is no. It's hard to assume Christian will ever be as productive as he was in 2019, but if you have a season nobody else but two other dudes has done, you earned your check. Most running backs aren't worth that kind of cheddar, but some are at certain times. The challenge is paying running backs at the correct time. I mean, Derrick Henry, this last season, was worth just as much as Christian McCaffrey. And don't forget, running backs still move the chains and score touchdowns, which, if football ever returns, I promise will still be considered valuable in terms of winning football games. The Panthers can spend the money on their best offensive player because they are paying Teddy Bridgewater below market value. My suggestion is, as soon as an NFL team realizes a running back is better than they could have hoped for, pay that guy immediately. We realized Christian McCaffrey was special back in 2018 when he had 13 touchdowns and 1,965 yards of total offense. Now I know this might sound a little crazy, but he would have been more affordable if the Panthers tried to give him a new deal two years before his rookie deal expired instead of just one. The devaluation of running backs sucks, but it's also different for every team. Some teams like the Panthers, Titans, and even the Minnesota Vikings now may place a higher value on the position because of the way they utilize a running back in their offense. Teams that are successful pass first offenses can get away with cycling through running backs. My point is, don't lump all teams into the you should never pay a running back category because it's not true. And McCaffrey and the Panthers in the way they use him is a good example of a guy who should be paid every penny that he just got paid. Now, I have threatened to take Roger Goodell's job more times than I can count. And I have learned my lesson. Never threaten the NFL commissioner because he will take your job before you ever even get close to his. The NFL declared that Roger Goodell will be announcing the first round of draft picks from his basement. Bitch! This is the one thing I had over you, Goodell. The one thing. Well, the joke might be on Goodell. If his basement is anything like mine, he'll be exposing himself to black mold and unsafe levels of radon. So, welcome to the real world, Goodell. <coughs> 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 Ah, oh, I can taste the radon in the air down here. Now I do have to credit Roger, who wanted us fans to have an authentic experience, even during the pandemic. Goodell stated, don't worry football fans, nobody boos me more than my own family. This will feel like a real draft, especially around pick number 15, when I tell my kids Santa Claus died from coronavirus and Christmas is canceled forever. The booze shall commence. Respect, Roger, respect. Now, courtesy of Field Yates on Twitter, there are seven teams who have at least 10 draft picks in this draft. These teams have the most ammo to move around and make trades to get players that they are high on. The Dolphins have the most at 14. Then it's the Vikings, Patriots, and the Jaguars with 12. The Broncos, Giants, and Packers all have 10. Now, don't worry too much about the Patriots. Half of their picks are in the sixth and seventh rounds, and I'm pretty sure New England never drafted a single good player after the fifth round. Uh, the Jags, Vikings, and Dolphins all have multiple first round picks. I think the Vikings with the 22nd and 25th pick uh, are most likely to use one of those first rounders to stockpile more picks either in the second round or for next year. 
That 25th spot is a great position for teams who want to jump back into the first round. Now, Minnesota could also package those picks to move up and get a player they're very high on. The Dolphins are a wild card. Maybe not during the regular season, but in this draft they are. With three first rounders, all of us expect the Dolphins to do whatever the hell they want. Now keep an eye on my Denver Broncos with their three third round picks and a need for wide receiver and tackle. They are reportedly very interested in trading in the first round as they sit in the middle at pick 15. What is unclear is if they are going to move up or down. What is clear is John Elway always moves Forward. Johnny John John! Woo! Woo! <laughs> Scooter Elway is back. Now the Jaguars pick at nine and 12. They are also interested in drafting a quarterback, but have the Bengals, Dolphins, Chargers, and even the Panthers picking ahead of them. All of those teams could take a quarterback. Hell, even Washington uh, with Ron Rivera now could pick a quarterback. If the Jags are high on a quarterback, they might look to the Lions and the New York Giants sitting at picks three and four as teams to trade with. Although, I'm not really sure Matt Patricia will be able to draft any players unless he knows who the Patriots want to take first. If this were a normal draft, I would be preparing for tons of trades. But since we don't know how this is going to play out, we could be wrong. There's, it is the biggest mystery draft of all time, and it'll be fun. Unless it's horrible and all of our teams are ruined. Now finally, the XFL, after laying off all of their employees on Friday, has filed for bankruptcy. Some of us were holding on to a sliver of hope that the next government bailout had an XFL allocation, but bankruptcy really kills those dreams. The XFL was succeeding, but when you lose tens of millions of dollars during your inaugural season due to unforeseen problems in the world with a global pandemic, it's not a surprise this shit happened. And I hate to say it, but it's just more evidence that Roger Goodell created COVID-19 and Vince Wilforks used jockstrap in his basement to stop the XFL from succeeding. The good news is you can still buy authentic XFL jerseys for $225 at XFL.com. The bad news is I think all of that money goes directly to Mark Tressman and the other former coaches acting as creditors trying to collect money. If you give that money to Tressman, he will just use it to identify the best quarterback available and then start his backup instead. The shitty thing is the XFL had a chance to succeed and yet was ruined by a force of nature the world was not prepared for. Spring football may never happen, but the second XFL attempt should not be lumped into the rest of the failures. Thanks for watching another episode of That's Good Sports. Please subscribe here on YouTube. Again, I provide near daily NFL news updates for your brains and ears and faces and souls and bodies and everything. I am every man.